Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to episode four of the Thai Pilot Podcast. Uh, with me is uh, the newly promoted Commander Jack Winnan. Say hi, Jack. Hello, everyone. And we also have uh, from Beta Commander of the Beta Squadron on the ISD Hammer, we have Colonel Doyon. Say hi, Colonel. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, bonsoir. Hello. So uh, we were we had been talking earlier about. Uh, I get a little diversity on uh, on this show. Uh, so, Colonel Doyon has told me uh, several times that the Emperor's Hammer uh, was really instrumental in helping him learn English. Um, Colonel Doyon is from Quebec, and uh, so Colonel, uh, why don't you tell us, uh, you know, just a little bit about like uh, how you found the EH, however long ago that was, and what you did, and then. Um, so how, how exactly did the EH help you uh, learn English? Um, well, I uh, joined the EH in 97, if I remember correctly. That was like more than 20 years ago. Um, oh, you actually joined before I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the few uh, people with uh, an ID number lower than Cliff. Um, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, Jen, I joined the EH in 97. I was maybe uh, 15 years old at the time. Um, and I just found the, the, the club on the, on the web uh, pretty much uh, randomly. I was looking for um, a French Star Wars club. And at the time, maybe it's still the case today. Uh, there was none, so I found the EH and I said, oh yeah, that sounds cool. If I remember, I think I joined another club before that, but nobody was answering me, so I joined the EH after that. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was really a good, uh, good journey there for the, the, the first part of my career. And uh, then I left, I think in 2005, uh, and I rejoined uh, in uh, last uh, January, and um, it was um, it was hard for me at the beginning uh, when I joined the EH because, uh, well, at the time uh, I was really not comfortable uh, with English. I was still learning it uh, at school, and um, well, just to put it. In the in a context, I don't want to get too political here, but uh, it might explain some um, some stuff maybe that uh, people don't just realize. Uh, if you maybe you knew it, but uh, you know it, I mean. But in '95, uh, there was a, a referendum in Quebec uh, for the um, secession of the province from Canada. Yeah, I remember seeing that when I was a little kid and, and wondering what the hell that was all about. But I was only ten years old, so. Didn't really quite make sense to me. Yeah, so, well, basically, uh, as you may know now, uh, Quebec is a French-speaking uh, province from Canada. Uh, in Canada, I mean, and um, at the time, uh, there was a lot of people, uh, well, maybe half the people, wanting to uh, separate from Canada and get their own country. And um, English was not really popular <laughs> at the time. Especially for me, because not personally, I mean, but I was living in a suburb of uh, of the city of Montreal, where I live uh, now, and um, and the uh, well, it was really a French-speaking place. Uh, I think there was a small community of English-speaking uh, people just uh, besides where uh, where I was living, and they all left now. I, I think the the no one that I knew. Uh, back then uh, are still living in Quebec. And well, uh, long story short, uh, English was not really uh, um, uh, important for us uh, when uh, we were at school. So um, learning, in, uh, there was still a, they're still uh, teaching it at school, uh, of course, because you have to, uh, well, to, to, to get uh, to be able to communicate with the rest of the world. And uh, well, but back then, um, we were still just speaking English, so uh, French, I mean. So uh, learning English was uh, really the basic. 
And if you want to improve it, you had to, um, well, get it somewhere. So that's when the, uh, that's where the EH is coming in my life because, um, uh, the EH, well, the people in it, of course, uh, helped me a lot to improve it and to catch some of the, um, the slang, you know what I mean? Because you don't learn it at school. So yeah, you, you, when uh, I talk to Alejandro, I don't understand uh, half of his slang. So yeah, <laughs> it's a well, cultural shock for sure. So 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 I was uh, speaking with uh, some former members of the EH. Uh, maybe some old people remember Yaks, uh, Yako uh, Kowalski helped me a lot, and uh, some others. And they, uh, they 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 took time to explain me how it was working and uh, everything. And well, uh, today um, the EH uh, well, helped me a lot to get uh, a job where uh, I had I have to speak English and French, and uh, here I am. That's pretty cool, man. So. Did you did you struggle a lot? Um, did you struggle a lot at first, like trying to commute? I'm, I'm trying to grasp like how um, what your level of fluency was when you joined the EH. Did you struggle like to communicate with your commander, or did you have to find other other French speakers? Um, I think I was pretty much the the only French speaking member of the EH at the time. I think there was one because. Uh, one other, uh, there was another guy uh, speaking French from Quebec because uh, I played uh, one of the uh, Thai uh, fighter battle recently, and I recognized some uh, words from from Quebec, and I was like, "Oh, I didn't knew that guy <laughs> back then." Uh, it would have uh, helped me a lot. Um, but yeah, well, fortunately for me, uh, my father was uh, fully bilingual, uh, so uh, he um, he helped me uh, sometimes to uh, write emails. But um, uh, I had my, my uh, French to uh, English dictionary back then, and I was always looking uh, at the words and uh, trying to write uh, a coherent email to my commander, and uh, it worked out. That, that's pretty cool to think of that, that we're, we're such a melting pot. I mean, just off the top of my head, you know, we have Americans and German people and Canadians and English, Dutch, uh, all, basically all over South America. And it's kind of cool to think that the EH has had sort of that indirect like influence on somebody's life in a way. Um, yeah, and um, I tried to reach out to uh, Ronan uh, to explain it how uh, his club helped uh, help me, but I, like you said, uh, maybe it helped a lot of people to just grasp uh, English uh, and get to know, to understand it pretty uh, pretty well and be able to use it in their uh, their everyday life, like um, like I do. And um, I'm I'm really thankful for for Ronan and uh, and I said it to. Um, Kowalski too. I wrote it an, e an email maybe uh, a month ago, uh, explaining in, in that um, well, just how much he helped me uh, in real life uh, without even knowing uh, that he did, because we're all characters. If you uh, uh, if you if you know what I mean, I'm. A, I mean, I'm talking to Zekter, I'm talking to Alejandro, I'm talking to Hav, but um, the, the the people, the real people behind those characters, uh, well, they're, they're humans too, and I'm a human too. So uh, it's really a good community. And um, yeah, I think it's really good. It's really uh, exceptional that what Ronan did when he created that club, uh, it's really it's really amazing, and uh, and I really think that it's one of the best community uh, that we uh, that I ever met on the internet. I bet I bet Ronan started all this just to meet some fellow nerds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you no, know, was not was not prepared for the the uh, the level of impact that it's, that it's having.
So I'm glad we could have this feel good experience. Thank you, Colonel. Well, I'm I'm just happy to just talk about it, you know, and uh, maybe Ronan will really... listen to uh, to the podcast. I'll send it to him. Yeah, it will be cool. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly heartwarming that you know this club that was for at least uh, from my perspective designed for entertainment ultimately proved to serve an educational purpose and in a very heartwarm in a very heartwarming way as opposed to you know sort of clinical oh, is emotional <laughs> yeah just a, just a bit <laughs> it's fine it's uh, fine so well, I, I gotta, but, but oh, you're ahead. right you're right because um uh well of course there's the uh, the uh, educational uh, purpose that you you were speaking about uh that um that served me uh, so well and i'm pretty sure that for other people uh it's also a way to uh break uh, maybe their uh, uh isolation from other people and and just being ac accepted in a community without any kind of judgment or well, not that much, but <laughs> yeah. But, if you'll uh, notice, when I was in my COVID isolation. I was more or less in the in the Discord twenty four seven there for about a week and a half. Yeah, uh, and the community is fun, and people are great. And uh, well, uh, of course, you can play games too. Like so. Six. so I've got a question. You said that, Doyon. You said that when you joined, your um. ID number was fairly low. Did the ID numbers actually start at one and go from there? Because mine is like uh, 1500 something. You know what? I, I don't think so. Cause I looked up Ronan's ID number once and it wasn't number one. I think he'd be number one. Yeah. I, I don't know who's number one. Maybe it was, um, I don't know how to pronounce his, uh, his name, but as that, Pine is that Tim? Well, the guy from Australia. Maybe his number. No. I don't know. I don't think so. Okay, but I don't know. I'm not actually well, sure. I've never heard it. No. Well, you know, I was uh, thinking about this today, and 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 you know, yeah, some people I I just don't know how to pronounce their name, and it's kind of funny because I got that French accent when I'm I'm saying it. Uh, just an example, like Colonel uh, Silvar, Silvar Nailo. You know, I, I just don't know how he, yeah, how he is pronouncing his name. We should have him on here and ask him. We'll yeah. <laughs> Next so podcast. Yeah. Um, like uh, Zach here, I've always pronounced it as Astatine. I don't think he was the original number one because didn't he he take over the EH after somebody else retired? Yeah, he, he took over after after Ronan uh, retired, but we don't talk about what happened after that. We just magically skipped <laughs> to 2000. Yeah, and it, it's taboo. <laughs> but but still, he, he, he did the uh, the database, so maybe he put himself as number one. But I really yeah, don't know. So we don't need to ask now. Well, anyway, thank you for answering that question. That's like, it's, it's actually <laughs> been something I've wondered ever since I joined. I'm so I. Damn, they have they really had over fifteen thousand members come and go. <laughs> you know, no, what? I, know. I don't think so. Because I remember I used to, I used to pronounce your name back as Jack Winand, and then yeah. the, I think when we did episode one, you said Jack Winand, and I was like, oh shit, it's Winand. <laughs> I didn't know. What I was <laughs> well, um, I know we I know we made this comment uh, off the air. Uh, Colonel, but uh, your your English uh, is better than a lot of hillbillies that I know. Of, so, thanks, thanks. Uh, I really appreciate it because uh, I don't speak English often in my everyday life. I I write it a lot. Uh, well, of course with EH people, but also at work. But uh, speaking it, I, I don't do it often uh, because well, more most people are speaking French anyway. And uh, the only part of uh, Quebec that uh, I'm speaking English is maybe on the west side of Montreal. And that's pretty much it. Is, um, I, I've never been to Canada ever, so maybe I'm speaking out of ignorance. Um, but is, 
as somebody I don't speak French other than the, the three words I told you about earlier, um, yeah. would I be, would I be able to get by uh, more or less okay in Montreal? Yeah, yeah, without any uh, any problem. Um, as I said, well, on the western part of the town, uh, that's where historically and, and, and still and it's still the case today. That's where the English speaking uh, Quebecers are living. Uh, and that's where the big houses are too. <laughs> uh, because, well, I don't want to make uh, this time a historic, uh, historical uh, lesson of Quebec, but uh, when the, uh, the, uh, the British uh, conquered Quebec, uh, well, like three centuries ago, I don't know, uh, maybe four, um well the the of course the british uh, settled in montreal and they took the western part of town and then uh well the, and the, most of the uh, french speaking on are on the eastern part of town and um but okay, that makes sense and uh yeah and then there's uh there's a lot of theories about why uh, i won't go there today but uh uh, if you uh, if you guys are coming to uh, to Montreal, you won't have any problems with uh, with uh, getting understood by anyone. I mean, uh, and that's pretty much the case in every big cities in Quebec. I mean, if you go to Quebec City, uh, you won't have any problem either. It's really if you go outside the uh, the big centers that maybe you will uh, people will be will be uh, people will be able to. To understand you mostly, but there, there might be a, there might have uh, some issues and maybe some misunderstandings. <laughs> I, I think I'll just uh, I think as long as I learn how to order poutine, order a beer, and uh, ask where the bathroom is, I should be okay. Yeah, and you will be fine. Montreal, no problem. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, man, thanks for joining us. This is uh, this is a really cool little story to explore, and uh, we'll have to have you back and uh, ask Colonel Silwar uh, how to pronounce his name. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I think he, he said it once, uh, maybe last weekend, but I, I missed it uh, when we were playing uh, X Wing versus Tie Fighter. But uh, yeah, I, I guess he will. Uh, he will be uh, uh, grateful to to uh, to say how to pronounce his name. I know, man. Jack, you have anything to add? Not really. Um, the uh, question that has been haunting my dreams at night about the ID pin says that has finally been answered. So maybe I'll sleep. Maybe I can sleep through the night. Well, I guess, uh, I guess Rapier will be able to, uh, to answer you uh, with uh, the, the real answer there. But uh, yeah, I, I don't really know why uh, I'm number uh, 289. And uh, just, I just know that I'm, I'm, I'm a, an old member of the H and I'm still there. <laughs> right on. Well, I thought I would um, start doing like a little, uh, every episode we do, I'll just, I'll cover a little bit of EH news. I thought like a little newscast would be fun. That's and, a good uh, idea. I see we're at about a little over 20 minutes. So I'll try to, I'm sure you guys are tired of listening to us. So I'll try to move through it quickly. <laughs> but um, okay, so what went down this week? Let's take a look at the, uh, we're about halfway through Raise the Flag. Um, and I happen to have the uh, the scores up right here. So uh, let's see how the hammer's doing there, Colonel. Let's have a look. <laughs> uh, checked in scores right there, 1,471 points for the hammer. However, I would like to point out that Beta is the best squad on the hammer by far. Yes. By far. And uh, I'm really proud uh, of uh, everyone, well, mostly everyone in, in beta. Uh, I know that Evil Grin and uh, Wildfire and uh, Karin Shub, I think uh, that's how he pronounces his name. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they're all doing great job. And, um, and uh, I, I, I try to do my part too. And uh, I, that's some kind of... Uh, uh, something that I want to be uh, at least the best partner on, on the hammer, uh, and then maybe someday I will be able to fight with the warrior. <laughs> I know I've, I've been trying to, I've been wanting to fly lately. I had to about I think a couple hundred points, and then uh, I started playing Rocket League again, and then just sort of went out the window. 
that, that's a great game, you know? Oh, man, I'm so bad at it, too, but I don't even care. It's really fun. No, it, it's really fun. I, I mean, you just have to race and kick a ball. Oh, man. Okay, so what else went down this... Uh, I think since the last episode, actually, I might be wrong, but uh, Squadron Management 5 uh, finally went live. So um, if you guys want to be a future commander, we just mentioned a, a few beasts, Evil Grin and Wildfire. Uh, if you guys want to be a future commander, you know, that is a requirement to be one. Um, we, on your ship, actually, they opened a fourth squadron, Lambda Squadron, and you guys uh, snagged my finest pilot. <laughs> so congratulations, yeah. Jeannie. We, we, we will watch your career with great interest. Yes, indeed. Congratulations, Jeannie. Yeah, you man. Yes. Congrats, and welcome aboard the Hammer. We need you. <laughs> uh, I always thought the hammer had a funny smell when I was on it. I thought it was Miles, but then you know he got promoted away, and the smell is still there. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe the the smell is from uh, former members. I don't know. I, I'm just <laughs> saying that. <laughs> that. You know what? That would make a lot of sense. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> and the last thing I'll, I'll mention is um, for episode five, we have a surprise guest lined up. Uh, only Jack and I know, so it, it's it's going to be a true EH old timer. Nice. Uh, hopefully so guys. it's not you, it's not your son, right? No, no. Well, Wookies do live a long time, so we'll see. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thanks for joining us again, Colonel, and uh, we will uh, catch you in the Discord. So go fly for your uh, your ship, guys. Yeah. Thanks, and uh, thanks for having me. Uh... I really appreciate it, and uh, well, uh, I hope you guys um, will continue to do that because it's really fun. I really enjoy uh, listening to the podcast, and uh, well, great work. Thanks, man. We enjoyed doing it. I'm going to put your Iron Star in the mail right now and uh, have John approve it. Yeah, yeah, thanks for thank you for coming on. This was a very is that, hard. Is that the reason you came on? Is it the the Iron Star? Yeah, it's the only reason, and just to show my lovely French Canadian accent to everyone. Yeah, we like Jack was saying before I accidentally cut him off there. Uh, yeah, we totally we appreciate your story, and that was really cool to hear. So, I'm sure uh, Ronan catches episode four. I'm sure he'll appreciate it too. Uh, well, yeah, I, I just hope that uh, uh, my story will be. Uh, well, I, I guess that some for other for other people, they, they will it will be kind of the same, you know. Well, I, anyone from the Netherlands or Germany or uh, any anywhere in the world that don't speak uh, English as uh, their main language, um, and I think that pretty much everyone will uh, be grateful to Ronan about about this. All right, thanks for joining us, man. We appreciate it. Have a good evening. Thanks for me, having me again. All right. Good night, folks. Wherever you are in the galaxy. <laughs>